Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and today I'm going to share my favorite shows of 2022. I have seen so many shows in the last year and some of them are some of my new favorite shows of all time so I'm so excited to just dive into this, tell you my favorite shows, discuss them, and have a grand old time. This is going to be in the order of when I saw these shows so we're going to start with April because from January to April I didn't really have a new favorite show that I wanted to discuss. So the first show that I'm going to discuss is Moon Knight. Moon Knight is one of Marvel's newest shows on Disney Plus and it follows a man named Stephen Grant who works at a museum. He lives a very kind of isolated life but he starts to realize that he has these episodes where he blacks out and he realizes that he has disassociative identity disorder. So his alter is Mark Spector who knows a lot more about his life than Stephen Grant does and they live a completely different life and together they have to figure out their whole new identity as Moon Knight. People seem to have a lot of issues with Moon Knight, but I had a great time with it, probably because I just really loved the premise of it. It felt like Indiana Jones meets National Treasure meets the MCU, and I also am deeply in love with Oscar Isaac, so any project that he's in, I'm like, oh my god, this is like the best thing ever made. But I genuinely had a really fun time with Moon Knight. It was action-packed, full of mystery, full of emotion, because we're dealing with Stephen Grant, getting to know Mark Spector, and how they're so different from each other and why they even have disassociative identity disorder because majority of the time it is caused from trauma. So we're exploring not only his newfound powers but his trauma as well and it was just so fun to have it set in the backdrop of Egyptian mythology and it was actually the first MCU project that made me go and read all the comics that I could find about Moon Knight. It kept me engaged every single week and I do wish it was a bit longer. I think that the MCU is really lacking with their shows because they are so short even though they say it feels like a long form movie because it's eight episodes so it is an eight hour movie I feel like these shows can be so much stronger if they were 12 to 15 episodes long that way we have time to not only unravel the plot but also the character development and the relationships I do think Marvel is lacking in that sense and they should really take their time with these projects and flesh them out a bit more but Moon Knight was great 10 out of 10, definitely one of my favorite MCU shows and I just thought it had some of my favorite aspects of different pieces of storytelling all woven together and I thought it was great. There are some issues with it but they're not overly glaring to me and I'm excited to see where Moon Knight is going to go next in the MCU. So in May, I went over to my best friend's house and she was watching Bridgerton season two with her mom and they were like, oh, we'll just finish this episode and then we can hang out. But then I started watching the show and I became obsessed and we watched Bridgerton season two and two days together and it was one of my favorite experiences. So Bridgerton is perfect for fans of Pride and Prejudice if you want something a little bit spicier. It has a lot of angst. Each season in the show follows a different character. So in season two we are following Anthony who is the head of his household ever since his father passed away and he feels a great responsibility for his siblings. And then we follow Kate who is somewhat of an outsider to the Bridgerton world and she comes from from a very affluent family and they come together and he is matched up with Kate's sister but over the course of time Kate and Anthony really realize that they have a lot of chemistry together and they are the ones who are truly in love. If you love angst, if you love historical romance, if you love beautiful costumes and sets and dialogue, Bridgerton is a show for you. I fell absolutely in love with Anthony and Kate. Their love story was palpable, their chemistry was off the charts, and just everything about this show was perfect. I couldn't think of a single thing that I would change. I also really enjoyed how you get to see the side characters and Anthony's siblings as they are living their lives and they're eventually going to have their own seasons in the future. So you get little glimpses of them to get excited for them, but mostly we're focused on Anthony and Kate and their love story and their will they, won't they type of relationship. Once you start watching it, you're not going to want to stop. The next show that I watched was on Apple Plus and it is Severance. 
Severance. Severance is one of the most unique hard sci-fi shows that I have ever seen. If you love Ex Machina and the type of feeling that that movie gives you, you would love Severance. Severance follows a company called Lumen Industries that has a very specific department that deals with classified information and in order to work in that department you have to be severed and when you are severed you have an operation that splits your memory. You have an any and an Audi. Your any is your person who works at Lumen Industries. You only remember going to work and you never remember leaving work and then your Audi is the person outside of work who lives a normal life who knows they work at Lumen Industries but they don't know what they do in order to keep that classified information secret. But when a new employee joins Lumen Industries and starts to point out the corruption within this company, our main character Mark starts to realize that his life and his choice to be severed isn't the best choice that he has made in his life. So slowly but surely this plot unravels into this really big conspiracy that just will blow your mind, leave you invested, and will leave you wondering what's going to happen next. This show is incredibly unique not only with its concept but with its set design that is very bare and cavernous, but also its commentary on corporate life and what it's like to be an employee in this day and age. It's incredibly relatable in this haunting way. It is very slow to start and you start to wonder if you really are enjoying the show, but once you get deeper into it, maybe like episode two or three, that's when you'll start enjoying the show and that's when you're really going to start getting invested in what Lumen Industry does, why these people are severed, and the new employee that is working in this department. 10 out of 10, fantastic, one of my new favorite shows of all time so amazing. I can talk about it for hours. Now let's move on to the next show that I watched in June and it is the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. So in 2022, I watched the prequels for the Star Wars movies with my friends and I have never seen them before and I fell absolutely in love with them. People always make fun of the prequels but I always have like the underrated opinion for Star Wars and I think that the prequels are better than the originals. I think they're more engaging, they're more emotional, they have so much more authentic character development or character corruption as well and I just fell in love with those characters so much more than the characters in the original trilogy. So I watched those movies in preparation for Obi-Wan Kenobi and Obi-Wan Kenobi gave me everything that I wanted and every emotion that I felt while watching the prequels. It developed Obi-Wan Kenobi's character after the prequels and it explored what his life is like after all those events happened and I just thought the plotline was so fun and engaging and I really enjoyed his moments where he's really reckoning with what he had to go through in the prequels. It was so well done. It was so heart-wrenching to watch one of my favorite characters in Star Wars go through so much and it was also incredibly fun. I just loved every aspect of it and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. No, I have not seen Andor yet. I know a lot of people tell me to watch that. I have not seen it yet. So don't tell me anything about Andor, but I loved Obi-Wan Kenobi. I love him so much. He's definitely one of my favorite characters in the Star Wars universe and it was great. The next show that I saw was The Bear on Hulu. The Bear follows Carmen who is one of the top rated fine dining chefs in America and he has to return back to Chicago after his brother suddenly passes away and he has inherited his brother's family sandwich shop. So he shows up to the sandwich shop and he realizes that this entire business is in complete disarray. So the entire show centers around him trying to improve this kitchen while also maintaining and trying to refresh this sandwich shop rather than simply being a sandwich shop that people just walk by and forget about. So what makes the bear unique is that it examines what it's like to work in the food industry behind closed doors in the kitchen because not a lot of us get a view of what it's like to work in a kitchen and how busy it can be no matter how small a business is. It shows the ups and downs and the different personalities in the kitchen and how they bash heads with one another and how Carmen has a very different view of what he wants this business to be compared to the people who have worked there for years and years. The Bear is one of the most chaotic shows in terms of dialogue because people are constantly screaming over one another, constantly bickering because they have very strong personalities that you get 
get to examine throughout the show the bear is absolutely fantastic and will make you really appreciate restaurants no matter how small or big they are and it just really makes you appreciate the food industry in general i cannot wait for season two to see how this business is going to grow and how they're going to improve it's a very simple concept but full of so much heart and love and passion and that's what i love the most about it after watching the bear i suddenly decided to watch the boys the boys is if you took the dc universe and flipped it on its head and made all those superheroes evil. So we follow the Seven, who are a group of superheroes who are famous around America and they take care of everyone, but behind closed doors they're incredibly evil. And then we follow a group called the Boys. The Boys are people who have been burned by the Seven and they want to get revenge on them and take down the Seven. So the Boys is one of the most gruesome, gory shows that I've ever seen. It really doesn't hold back in the way that it flips the whole concept of a superhero and makes them super villains, but in the eyes of the public in the show, they are superheroes. So they don't see how corrupted and how evil they are, but you get to witness that as a fly on the wall, while you also get to see the boys trying to take down the Seven. The Boys is definitely one of my new favorite shows of all time simply because it is so wonderfully written. It has a fantastic cast of characters that are caricatures of your favorite heroes and it explores what it's like to have someone have so much power and how that can corrupt them. And it also explores societal moments in our modern history in a very subtle way. They're not on the nose with these events and their commentary about it, but they will slip it into the plot line. It makes you think and it makes you really ruminate about who who these characters are and how every single character isn't good and how they're all morally gray or completely morally corrupted and it is absolutely fantastic. My favorite character in that show is Billy, which my friend always laughs about because everyone calls him Butcher and I'm like, no, that's Billy. Billy is just the type of character that I love. He is morally gray. He is the head of the boys. He is sarcastic and witty and I just love him, but he's also incredibly terrible. And he's also one of my least favorite characters, which is so fun. And I also think the boys has one of the best villains of all time and that is Homelander. Homelander is one of the most interesting villains that I have ever seen on television and he is just enigmatic. Every time he's in a scene you're both incredibly excited but also horrified because you're excited to see him wreak chaos but you're also incredibly scared wondering what he's going to do next because he is completely unpredictable. I think if you love the MCU and you just wish they were darker you would love the boys. It's really fantastic, it's really engaging, I could could not stop watching. 10 out of 10, definitely one of my new favorite shows of all time. Another new favorite show of mine that I saw in 2022 that is a new favorite comfort show is Abbott Elementary. Abbott Elementary follows a group of teachers who work in Philadelphia as they are just trying to survive as teachers. My mother is a teacher, so this show is incredibly relatable because I went to the same school that she taught at, so I got to see all the hard work that she put into her job and witness seeing the comedic moments of all these teachers as they are dealing with very daily life struggles as a teacher but they kind of heighten it to a comedic level is so fun. It is just an incredibly sweet show if you are someone who grew up in the American education system, especially if you grew up in a school that wasn't as well funded as others. It is just fantastic. It really explores what it's like to be a teacher and how hard they work and it is fantastic. It is totally worth the hype. It is a show that you could just put on in the background and enjoy and every time a new episode comes out I am always so happy to watch it because it just brings a smile to my face. The next show that I saw in 2022 completely consumed my entire life and it is... The House of the Dragon. The House of the Dragon I can talk about for hours. It has reinvigorated my love for Game of Thrones and I do think I prefer it to Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is way too gory and excessive with its violence against women, but House of the Dragon feels different. House of the Dragon is the prequel to Game of Thrones and it follows the Targaryen family before their eventual downfall and it is absolutely fantastic. What I think I like more about House of the Dragon than Game of Thrones is the fact that it's mostly 
just conversation, at least for the first season. They are just conversing back and forth about their different issues and the way that they want to run the kingdom and how they think they should be the heir to the throne, how someone else thinks they should be the heir to the throne. And I love shows like that. I love shows where they're just talking to one another. I love the drama of that. I love how it keeps you on the edge of your seat, but it's not necessarily overly violent and gory like Game of Thrones, which just felt unnecessary at a certain point. House of the Dragon is a show that leaves me wondering what's going to happen next and I know I can find out what's going to happen next if I just google it because it is a historical plotline that is mentioned in Game of Thrones but I love the mystery of it. I love Rhaenyra and Alicent. I think they are two of the most interesting characters in Game of Thrones in general and I just love every single character. They're all so interesting, they're all so morally corrupted and they are all so driven to become the heir of the throne and it is fantastic, it is otherworldly, it has such a beautiful set design and costumes and I just know that I'm going to love this so much more than Game of Thrones. I do know it's going to go in an incredibly different route in season two and three and it's going to get incredibly violent because this is all leading up to a war that we already know about but I'm excited for it. I'm excited for it. I'm really eager to see what's going to happen next. Fantastic. So fun. Definitely worth your time if you loved Game of Thrones, but you were hesitant to start House of the Dragon. I think it's better. That's all I got to say. The next show that I want to talk about is The Rings of Power. The Rings of Power is another prequel fantasy show and it is the prequel to Lord of the Rings and I had fun with it. I loved it. I had a great time with it. Yes, it is slower than Lord of the Rings. Yes, it's not necessarily canon, but I enjoyed it because I loved returning to Middle-earth. I loved watching all these different characters from different parts of Middle-earth and how their storylines eventually converge into this one storyline that just leaves you completely breathless and it is just so fun, so good. I thought the set was beautiful. I thought the costume were also beautiful. I just thought the storyline was really fun. I think people were a little too hard on this show and they kind of went on that train of just overtly hating something just because everyone else was hating it and I don't think that's necessarily a fun thing to do. I think you should really give it the time that it deserves and really look at it from an objective standard rather than going into a show saying you're going to hate it. So I thought Rings of Power was fun. It's definitely not as good as Lord of the Rings because Lord of the Rings is on this pedestal that nothing can compare to, but it gave me the feeling that I wanted from Middle Earth. I wanted to explore more of the lives in Middle Earth and that's what this show gave me. The next show that I started watching but have not finished is What We Do in the shadows on Hulu. What we do in the shadows is kind of like Abbott Elementary where it's a documentary and these cameramen are following a group of vampires who live in Long Island and they are just getting up to shenanigans. It is hilarious. It is just such a fun time. It's definitely a comfort show because these vampires have lived for thousands upon thousands of years but they don't know how to use a laptop. They don't know that America is bigger than Long Island. They don't really know how to be a good vampire but that's what's so fun about it. It is just such a fun ridiculous show that Taika Waititi has created and it's just a grand old time. That's all I can say about it. I love it. It's so fun. The next show that I watched was The White Lotus. I have seen so many people throughout the year talk about The White Lotus and I didn't really know what it was about until someone told me the premise and I thought oh I'm gonna love that. The White Lotus has three seasons. Only two seasons are out, but it follows a different White Lotus around the world. A White Lotus is a very affluent hotel that a bunch of rich people stay at for seven days, and you just get to follow them for those seven days, and you get to see chaos ensue. It really highlights how ridiculous some rich people are and how they are inherently just so out of touch with society and what it's like to be an incredibly genuine person and it also explores marriage troubles and sexuality and following your dreams and parental expectations and it is so fun. It's very similar to House of the Dragon in the way that these characters, they're just talking. They're just talking endlessly to one another and through all that talking, secrets are coming out. People are exposing one another, they're blackmailing one another and their lives are falling apart. 
It is wonderful if you love gossiping, if you're a chismosa like me, you will love this show. It is absolutely fantastic, so addictive. Once you start it, you're like, I can't stop watching. It's like watching a train wreck, you can't look away. It is wonderful, so entertaining, so utterly ridiculous with these caricatures of rich people, but it's so on the nose and so fun. It's such a fun satire. And the last favorite show of 2022 that has consumed my entire being is The Amazing Race. So I saw the recent Amazing Race from 2022, fell in love with the concept of the show, and my dad and I have watched already season one, two, and now we're on season three. So a lot of people apparently don't know what The Amazing Race is about because I spoke about it on Twitter and a lot of people said that they didn't know what that show entailed. So The Amazing Race is a reality show set in America and it follows, I think, 11 different teammates. So we have two people for each team. Some of them are married couples, some of them are best friends, some of them are twins, etc and they are doing a race around the world. So they travel around the world and complete different tasks and each episode one teammate who is the last teammate to check into the final location is eliminated. So I think we have 11 episodes per season and you get to see these people just go through so much. My memory card filled up so it cut me off, but you get to see these contestants travel around the world, complete these very random yet incredibly tough tasks, and based on their strategy and based on how quick they are on their feet, literally, you get to see someone win a million dollars. It feels like a roller coaster of a show. It is so invigorating because not only do you get to see beautiful shots and locations around the world, but you get to see these people really earn those million dollars. You get to see them go through such tough situations like trying to get an airline ticket two minutes before it's about to fly out. You get to see people try these very weird tasks and work together and really communicate with one another as a team in order to win and it's just such a rewarding show because at the beginning it's a group of strangers and you don't really know anything about them but throughout the course of the show and the season you get to know them a little bit better you find your favorite team you root for them and when you see them finally win a million dollars you're so excited for them because the race is so tough i can personally never do amazing race myself because i am too high maintenance i need to eat too much throughout the day and i just can't run that fast but it is such a fun show to live vicariously through these people to see different sites around the world to see people really put in the work in order to win a competition those are my favorite shows of 2022 i fell in love with so many shows in 2022 they are also uniquely fantastic and there is definitely something for everyone on this list let me know what's your top three favorite shows of 2022 i would love to get some recommendations down below and let me know if you have seen any of these shows in what you think about them. If you want to follow me anywhere else on social media, all my social media links will be down below. If you have made it this far in the video, leave a TV emoji down below so we can see who stays for the longest in all my videos. If you do, thank you so much for your support and commenting and liking and sharing my channel with others. Before I go, if you have any TV video ideas that you want me to do in the future, put them down below because I would love to hear your thoughts because I would love to talk about TV more often on this channel, but I don't really know what you guys would want from me. So let me know if you have any specific ideas that you want me to do in the future and I would love to take that into account and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!